It's a Minimalist Monday edition of Optimal Living Daily, episode 605, How to Find Peace Living with a Pack Rat, by Leo Babauta of zenabbots.net, and I'm Justin Mollick, your personal narrator, reading to you every day, just like an audiobook, free of charge, mostly from blogs, but sometimes from books, and with permission from the websites. But before we get to it, big thanks to Gusto for sponsoring this episode. Gusto is payroll, benefits, and HR built for small businesses. I love that it's both super simple and paired with great customer service. That lets you spend less time on paperwork and more time on what you care about. Sign up for Gusto today. Go to gusto.com old and get started with one month of payroll free. Today's post is one of the most frequently asked questions I hear when it comes to minimalism, how to deal with other people in your life that aren't minimalists or interested in simplifying. So let's get right to the post as we optimize your life. How to Find Peace Living with a Pack Rat by Leo Babauta of zenhabits.net. Many people who try to simplify their lives and declutter their living spaces find that the most difficult obstacle in their quest for simplicity isn't the clutter itself, but a significant other or roommate who isn't on board the simplicity train. Living with a pack rat can be downright frustrating for many simplifiers. Recently, reader JC asked, quote, I live in a big house with tons of things, mostly my husband's. He's not on board with my lifelong minimalism and quest for a simple lifestyle. Shame, I adore him so. Any suggestions for finding peace with a pack rat? Unquote. This is actually an issue that many people making positive life changes will face. They want to make changes, but others in their life don't want to make the changes. If you have a spouse who likes to spend a lot, but you're trying to be frugal, or a spouse who eats fatty, sugary foods when you're trying to eat healthy, it can be very difficult but there are ways to live in peace instead of constant war with a pack rat. Let's look at several strategies and you should find the strategy that applies best to you. Strategy one, win them over. This is the strategy I've used with success with my wife, Eva, and it's the ideal strategy, of course. I didn't force Eva to join me in any of my changes, but partly because of inspiration from me and partly because she's a strong-willed person herself, in the past year or so, she has joined me or worked on her own, to eat healthier, exercise for the first time in her life, reduce clutter, it's a blast, become organized, and achieve her goals. I'm extremely proud of her. The strategy is to inspire your significant other to join you in your positive life change. You cannot change someone or force them to change. You can't nag or bully. However, here's what you can do. Number one, inspire. Show them what a great thing this change is for you, how it has helped you and made you happier. Show them how much of a burden is lifted when you get rid of clutter, how simplicity is so much more calming and pleasing. Show them how excited you are about this. Number two, inform. Talk to them about what you're going through, why you're doing it, what it requires, how it makes you feel. Offer to give them some reading material. Ask if they're interested. If not, don't force it on them. Just encourage. I've sent Eva links from time to time that she might be interested in, and she actually reads some of them. Number three, ask for help. Making a positive life change is always easier and more likely to be successful if you have support from a loved one. Be direct and ask your significant other, or roommate if that's the case, for their help. Many times people will help if you ask for it. Don't make it seem like you're trying to change them, but that you just want their help in making your change. Number four, make it a team effort. If they are open to the change and want to read more about it, ask them if they'd like to join you. Sometimes they will. Suggest that instead of you making this change alone, the two of you do it together as a team. It can be great fun. Even I love decluttering together. Number five, be patient. Just because you're excited about making a change doesn't mean your partner will be. You have to expect that. People move at their own pace. Just be encouraging and months down the road, you never know, your partner might start to come around. Until then. Don't be negative at all if you can help it. Negativity works against you. Strategy two, zone defense. If the first and ideal strategy doesn't work, or at least hasn't worked yet, and your partner or roommate refuses to join you in decluttering, work out a compromise. A compromise is not ideal. Compromises never are, but it can keep both of you sane, so you might give it a try. Split up the house into zones. For example, the living room and kitchen might be yours, while the home office and bedroom are theirs, or you might have zones within a room. Again, not ideal, 
but it's workable. And I've heard of people doing this with success. Within your zone, you're free to do with it what you want. Declutter or hoard, it's up to you. Decorate it how you want. Keep it as clean or as dirty as you want. But no one is allowed to violate the other's zone. And if you make a mess in the other person's zone, you must agree to clean it up right away. This can be a permanent or temporary solution. Strategy three, find zen in the center of chaos. This is much more difficult than the first two strategies, but I've also known people who have learned to use it. Just learn to live with their pack rat ways. Accept that you cannot change them, but that you love them and just accept their clutter and mess. It's difficult, I know. It takes a lot of meditation, a lot of soul searching, a lot of deep breathing. It may take months or years to learn this, but consider that if you don't, you may lose your sanity. Accept what you cannot change and change that which you can. One way to live with this strategy is to ask your pack rat loved one if you can declutter certain things and keep their clutter hidden in cabinets. Then you just need to worry about them leaving things around the house. If you don't like it, you'll need to clean up after them. If you can live with it, then don't clean up. If you choose this strategy, I suggest number one, doing some daily meditation or exercise to find your center of peace. And number two, having at least one corner of the house that is your own that you can spend time in reading or meditating or working without clutter, your little zone of peace. Strategy four, ditch them. This, of course, is the most drastic of the strategies and is strictly a course of last resort. There are times when two people grow apart and their lifestyles and views on life and hopes and dreams are no longer compatible. In these cases, it could be beneficial to both parties if they go separate ways especially if staying together causes more harm than it does good. Now, I'm not recommending that you get a divorce. I would never recommend that, although I have heard of people who have done this because they can no longer live together due to clutter and other issues. I think the strategy is usually more appropriate for roommates as they don't have the issues of a relationship and legal and financial ties to separate. But if things have gotten so bad that you are no longer happy in your relationship, you should consider all options. You just listened to the post titled How to Find Peace Living with a Pack Rat by Leo Babauta of zenhabits.net. Big thanks to Gusto for believing in this podcast and playing a huge part in keeping it running. Payroll and benefits is not easy and can take a lot of time and energy to keep up with, especially if you're trying to do it all on your own. But Gusto makes it really easy to handle payroll, benefits, and HR. Nine out of 10 users say Gusto is easier to use than other payroll solutions. It's built for small businesses, so you don't have to have an HR expert or become one yourself. The truth is traditional payroll and HR providers are built for big companies and their technology tends to be way outdated and clunky, but Gusto is easy to use and will help you run your business better and faster. They can automatically file and pay your payroll taxes and compile and send your W-2s and 1099s, saving you a lot of time and money. Sign up for Gusto today. Go to gusto.com slash old. That's G-U-S-T-O dot com slash old and get started with one month of payroll free. I hope today's post helps with that frequently asked question about what to do if you're living with someone who has no interest in simplifying or minimizing. Something I'd add is to do something that's a little more entertaining and less work, like watch a movie about it. The Minimalist documentary is on Netflix now. I think available in most countries actually, so Just watch that with the person and discuss it afterwards. You can invite them to The Minimalists or Courtney Carver or Joshua Becker's tours. Just say that you're interested in going and would love to have them come along. And of course, you can share this show with them. I cover minimalism and simple living a lot on this podcast in a really easy to understand format. But you can listen in the car with them or share an episode and ask them what they think about it. But the more you can do it without trying to push your values onto them and let them see the benefits themselves, the better off you'll both be. But enough of my commentary. Thank you for being here and listening every day with me. Have a great rest of your day and I'll see you tomorrow where your optimal life awaits. Hey, this is Dan from the Optimal Finance Daily Podcast, which is a lot like this show, except more focused on personal finance. Justin handpicks the best posts he can find from blogs and authors like Ramit Sethi, Mr. Money Mustache, and more, and I read them to you five days a week. So if you enjoy this podcast, come on over and subscribe to Optimal Finance Daily too. And together, we'll optimize your financial life. 
You've been listening to Optimal Living Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us. And remember, your optimal life awaits. Oh,